Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong and welcome to part four of our series of interviews with Dr. Michael Snyder of Stanford University. In this video, Dr. Snyder will talk about how data from wearables is helping to detect COVID-19. The standard COVID-19 wearables project was launched by his lab earlier this year. The goal of this project is developing a method to detect onset of COVID-19 infection even before the symptoms become apparent as self-isolating before becoming contagious is crucial in preventing the disease spread. Please note that some of this video overlaps with the previous videos from Dr. Snyder as we have compiled all the COVID-19 sections from the interview into this part. And with that, let me start the interview. Okay, so we wrote an algorithm to be able to tell when you're getting ill even before you realize it because your heart rate goes up before you realize you're sick. And it turns out for some people, the skin temperature goes up, but not necessarily for everyone, at least as you can detect it for a smartwatch. So we wrote this algorithm and it also worked on the time I was asymptomatic, didn't have symptoms, okay? I did still pick that up. So we also then tested it on three other people, one of whom was ill twice every single time we could pick up an elevated heart rate before they were symptomatic. So why is this a big deal? Well, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So as you might imagine, we've been developing this program further. We're really pushing it along. Uh, and then the pandemic hits. And so we really just totally scaled this thing. So we're trying to tell when people are getting sick before, they're, before they realize it from just a smartwatch. And just their resting heart rate will tell you whether you're getting ill. So we think heart rate is one of the most important things to measure for detecting illness. It's better than skin temperature or oral temperature even. And in fact, in the case of COVID-19, many people don't get a fever. In fact, many people don't get symptoms at all. But we can pick up when people are getting ill. We can see this heart rate. So we've taken uh, 32 people have had COVID infections and 80% of the time we can, we can see their increase in resting heart rate. And in some cases, it's 10 days before they got symptomatic, okay? So they've been running around for 10 days ill, spreading this and not even knowing it. And so that's the power of this. This thing, it tells you when, it tells you when you're getting ill, these smartwatches can, because your resting heart rate goes up. Very, very sensitive measure because they're measuring so constantly, right? They're measuring you 24 seven. So we've now written an alarming system uh, it's very, uh, I think, sophisticated computationally. It's an algorithm that can tell you when you're getting ill. It's measuring you all the time. What it does is it figures out your normal pattern. And then as soon as you have a shift from that normal pattern, it sends off a yellow alert. And if that stays high for a while, it'll send off a red alert, which will mean, you know, don't go to a bar, stay home, <laughs> you know, don't go spread the virus. And if it shifts back to green, everything's fine, you're, you're cool. So we've written this alarming system. So we hope to roll this out. We're testing it now on a very, very small scale. We hope to roll it out within a month to get out to the world, to be honest. So we'll scale it. It's computationally very tricky because we're measuring millions of people all at once, pulling in their data, following them for heart rate. And when they see these abnormal things or when we detect these that we've got to alert them then we think we've got it all figured out so it's pretty right. cool actually yes. to be um so uh, on the covid thing are you still looking for participants or have, are you, have you come we are so we rolled the study out in two ways the uh, one way that we're i wouldn't say completely wrapped up is we're, we've taken in people who are uh who have had covid19 and they give us a, the dates and all that. And so we're tr still training our algorithm. We want to get them as optimal as possible. And we really want to understand the people we miss. So in the first 32 people who had COVID, we missed six. And I think they had lung issues or were on medication. And so we want to understand that so we can then train new algorithms for those folks <laughs> and try and figure out you know, if we can tell them because in, re in reality, once you get ill, you really do have a physiological change that we should be able to pick up. So we are interested in more and more people. It'll give us uh, better data for being able to better train our algorithms. And then the part of the study we're just rolling out now 
is to try and tell you when you when we think you're getting sick. <laughs> so the first part is taking you when you've been sick, trying to train our algorithms to tell the best way to measure that. And now going forward, we're going to try and enroll people and tell them when they're getting sick. Now we're trying that on a very small group of people initially to get make sure it works because what we're doing is we're doing this anomaly detection. We're looking for things that don't look right. And we tune the algorithm in a certain way that um, if you want to do as early detection as possible, you make it very sensitive. That means you'll get a lot of false positives, a lot of false alarms. And if you want to, you know, you can t dampen it and say, well, we're going to make the threshold really high. You have to wait 24 hours. Uh, well, then, you know, people might be spreading it some. So we're trying to find the sweet spot. So we think we have a time that's we think we can get a first yellow alarm where we see first signs of illness after about, it's roughly three to six hours. And then the red alarm will go off after 12 hours, uh, which we think is kind of an optimal. And that system should give a false alarm roughly every three months or so on average. But we might give it, let it up, be up to the person to decide how many false alarms they want to set. So we'll let them dial the threshold. And that's what I like. I'm a big believer in individualized medicine. So imagine you're working in a high risk situation, you're a healthcare worker, and you're, you're around COVID patients all the time. Maybe you want to set that threshold a bit higher <laughs> and have a false alarm go off every month so that you can detect it faster and therefore have less probability of spreading it. So it, 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 yeah, and so it depends on your situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, no that makes sense. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.